Welcome to A Day in the Word. I'm Bishop Aaron Motley. I'm so glad you could join us today. On this program, what we love to do is answer your Bible questions. And most of these questions are controversial questions. But the question we have with us today is, how do you have the peace of God? And that is our question. Having the peace of God is our subject today. So let's get right into the Word of God today. First of all, let us thank God for another day. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity for us to share the word today. And we pray that your word would be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. We bind every work of the enemy that would bring in a form of distraction. And we thank you in Jesus' name, Father, for deliverance and healing and blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, we're getting right into the message on today. Having the peace of God. And what is having the peace of God? Well... Sometimes we use the phrase, the peace of God, and sometimes we use the phrase, the peace with God. There is a slight difference in the peace of God and having peace with God. First, let's look at what does it mean having the peace with God? Well, having the peace with God means that you can have perfect fellowship with God, that there is nothing in between you and the Lord. There is nothing hindering you from having a perfect fellowship with the Lord, that you are, uh, you're, you're not the enemy of God, but that you are in perfect friendship relationship with God. So that's having peace with God. But we're going to talk about having the peace of God. What is the peace of God? Well, the peace of God is a supernatural energy born out of the Holy Spirit that creates calm assurance. So when we're talking about having the peace of God, we're talking about having calm assurance from the inside. That you are confident that you have a right relationship with God and that there is nothing hindering your relationship with God. So you can see how there's a fine line between the two. Having the peace with God just simply means that you are, you are in a perfect alignment with the Lord. But the, but the peace of God is the actual energy or the power that you have, a, in, an internal a supernatural power that you have in the Holy Spirit. So you have to have the Holy Spirit of God living in you in order for you to generate the peace of God from within. So we're going to go to the book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 and 7 and I think that will help you with your understanding of the peace of God. Here it says, be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So this starts out by saying, be careful for nothing. In some translations, it says, be anxious for nothing. Many people are anxious or have anxiety and they're having trouble sleeping at night. They're having trouble all throughout the day because of this anxiety that they have on the inside. So it's a disturbance in your emotions. And it is not something that you can just easily uh, brush off because this disturbance in your emotions is, is, is something going on inside of that person that keeps them uh, anxious and keeps them where they are disturbed and troubled. And so he says that we are not to be troubled. We're not to be anxious. But in everything, we should pray and give supplication to God and thanksgiving to God and to let our requests be made known unto him. So if you know how to cast your cares upon the Lord, to, to make sure that whatever is troubling you on the inside, you can take that to God. Talk to him about it. And when you talk to God about it, you can then have that peace, that calm assurance on the inside, knowing that God is going to take care of whatever it is. And that's the reason why he says, and the peace of God, which passes understanding, shall keep your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. This is the cure for anxiety, is to cast your cares upon the Lord, because you know he cares for you. He says here that when you begin to pray to God, 
and give your trouble over to the Lord. Talk to God about any and everything. And when you give it over to the Lord, knowing that he's going to take care of it, then it says that this peace will come over you. And it is a peace that passes all understanding. We cannot, we cannot grasp it. We cannot really put a pin on it or, or even be able to comprehend the power of this peace that we have. You can be in any situation and among any circumstances in your life. And this peace that comes over you, uh, it means that you're not going to be disturbed by these things that's going on around you because you know God's got it. You don't have to be anxious about it because you know God's got it. You don't have to be disturbed from inside and troubled and having trouble sleeping at night because you're thinking and you're worrying about various things. You don't have to because once you cast your cares upon the Lord and take it to him, he's going to give you this perfect peace that passes all understanding. Now, how do these anxieties come on in the first place? If you're a child of God, uh, you shouldn't have these anxieties to come over you and to overtake you. But the reason why anxiety comes over a person uh, and, 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 and take you over is because there is something going on in your life that shouldn't be there. The, there are burdens that you're carrying. There, uh, the Bible says that we're, we're to cast these heavy weights over on the Lord because, uh, you know, we, the, it is it's a really a sin that is in your life. What is a sin? Basically, sin means that you are, you are doing something you should not do. You are doing something that is not aligned with the will of God. And you are aware that you are not in line with the will of God. That you're somehow uh, uh, aligning yourself with the world and the things that's going on in this world. And when you do that, uh, it takes you out of the presence of the Lord, which is the peace of God. So sinners cannot have the peace of God. Anyone who is living their life in sin or if you regard a sin in your life, then you know that it's going to be hard for you to have the peace of God and it's going to cause anxiety in your life. So when there's something in your life, it's sort of like a fly in the milk. You know, you, you wouldn't want to drink your milk if you see a fly floating around inside of it. Something is there that should not be there. And so I'm going to read something from Isaiah chapter 59, verse 1 and 2, where here it says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. So that's a time when God will not hear your prayer. It's when you know that there's a sin in your life, when you know that there's a fly in the milk, when you know that there's something going on in your life that should not be there. And if you have not given that over to the Lord and, and repented of that sin, then he's not going to regard your prayers. Look at what it says here in Psalm 66, verse 18 through 20. It, the psalmist says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. But verily, God has heard me. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, which has not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. Well, see, he starts off here saying, if I regard iniquity in my heart, that means if there's sin in my life and I know about it, and if I, I know it's there, and if I have not turned it over to the Lord, then I don't need to expect God to hear my prayer. I don't, I don't have that perfect alignment with the Lord. I don't have that right fellowship with God. If I'm committing adultery, I cannot have right fellowship with God. If I'm committing fornication, I cannot have right fellowship with God. If I'm stealing, if I'm a thief, I cannot have right fellowship with God. If I'm mistreating people, I cannot have right fellowship with God. All of these are the kinds of things that come upon you uh, when you 
are regarding iniquity in your heart, you will have anxiety. You will not have the peace of God. And therefore, you are troubled from within. Well, this troubling from within is the conviction of God. God is letting you know, listen, I know that you're out of line with me. I know that our fellowship is not perfect. I'm trying to get you where you'll be corrected and brought back into right fellowship with me. That's what God is saying to you if you are regarding iniquity in your heart. God is using this feeling of anxiety, this troubling on the inside so that you would be drawn toward him. And then when you are drawn toward the Lord, you repent of that sin. You begin to ask God to uh, create in you a clean heart and renew a right spirit from within so that your attitude would be right, so that your character would be right, so that you will align yourself up with God's holiness because he wants us to live a holy life, a life where we're being, where we're being honest and where we're pure in heart. Those are the people who will And so that's why the psalmist goes on to say, that and he uses the word but here because he knows that hey if as long as I'm regarding sin in my heart God is not hearing me but I know that right now I am in right relationship and right fellowship with God so as long as I'm in re right relationship and right fellowship with God he says God has heard me he has attended to the voice of my prayer blessed be God which has not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. So this person is very confident that as long as he's not regarding any iniquity or sin in his life, he knows that God is hearing him. He knows that he has the mercy of God. And he's, he has confidence in his prayers unto the Lord. And that's where God wants us today. He wants us where we can have confidence in our prayers with him. And when we have confidence, when we approach the Lord, then that means that you have the peace of God. Look at what it says in Colossians 3, 14 through 15. Here it says, and above all these things put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts to the which also you are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Now, you see what's going on here? Here he says that if above all things we put on charity, we can have the peace of God. What is charity? That's agape love. That is the love that comes from God. Again, this, this is an energy that is generated out of the Holy Spirit. So you cannot walk in love unless you have the Holy Spirit. So in order to have the peace of God and to walk in charity, you must be born again. This is an absolute necessity for you to be in aligned with the perfect will of God is that you must be born again. How do you get born again? You repent of your sins and you ask the Lord to come into your life and forgive you of your sins, wash you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness and impurity of heart, and that you will line yourself up with him when he pours his spirit into you. And when his spirit is in you, you belong to God. You're in his family. You become a child of God. And once you are a child of God, you can have that right fellowship with him. And any time that anxiety comes on you because of different things that happen in life, maybe you begin to worry about certain things. That's a sin. Whenever you begin to uh, find yourself, uh, you know, just disturbed and, 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 and wondering, oh, you know, is this going to work out okay? Uh, I'm nervous about this thing or that. Basically, the thing to do right there on the spot is to go right to the Lord and say, Lord, uh, I'm feeling this feeling of anxiety. I'm feeling this nervousness. I'm feeling this fear. And so the Bible says that perfect love casts out fear. So that's the reason why it's so important that we walk in love in everything that we do. Let love be your motive. So if love is the motive for everything you do, the perfect peace of God comes over you and you will not be anxious for anything, but you continuously pray to God. 
continuously have a heart of thanksgiving, continuously appreciate him and worship him and praise him. And if you continuously have a worshipful uh, atmosphere around you, no matter what's going on in your life, no matter who gives you bad news, no matter what things happen, you've got to remember, you've got to stay perfectly aligned with God so that you can have his peace. Oh, it's so important to have the peace of God. And sometimes we really have to fight for it because there's so many things going on. I mean, stuff happens, right? You know, you have all kinds of things going on. You might get a phone call where someone says something that's going to be disturbing to you. Uh, you might uh, hear some news that may be disturbing to you. And once you start feeling that, just say, Lord, I know I'm not supposed to feel this because you got this. I know that you, you have it under control and nothing gets past you, Lord. So I rest in you, Christ. I rest in you and I believe that everything's going to be well. All right. So he says again in Colossians 3, 14 through 15, uh, verse 15, it says, let the peace of God rule in your heart. Oh, that's very important. When he says, let the peace of God rule in your heart. That means that you have control of it. Yeah, see, you don't have to take pills all the time. You know, you, you, I believe that the cure for anxiety is right here. All you have to do is let the peace of God rule in your heart. How do you do that? Just like I said, you take it to him in prayer. Your prayers, your supplications, make your requests known unto the Lord. Repent of your sins and give it to God at that very moment. And this peace that passes all understanding comes over you. And you may not be able to figure it out. You don't even have to try to figure it out. Just know that, hey, you know, a loved one passed away. And yes, you can grieve. Yes, you can feel sad and, 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 and grieve over that loved one passing away. But you don't have to get into deep depression because eventually, the time and the season for grieving will be over. So when the time and the season for grieving is over, you'll be able to continue on in life. You may feel like, well, I can't get over this person passing away, but you can get through it. I'll say that again. You, you may not get over this person passing away, but you certainly can get through it by the peace of God that passes all understanding. So you need the peace of God, no matter what's happening. You don't have to soak into deep depression, but let the peace of God rule and reign in your heart, no matter what's going on in your life. And you'll be able to continue on to carry out the perfect will of God in your life and to do the things that you need to do. Get up and go to work. Get up and go and take care of the things you need to take care of. Uh, you know, you, you got kids that you need to take care of. Take care of your children. Take care of your husband. Take care of your wife. Take care of your responsibilities. Don't just sit in depression. All you got to do is let the peace of God reign in your heart. Amen. This is a way that you bind the devil and cast him out because perfect love casts out fear. Praise the Lord. Look at this in Isaiah chapter number 26 in verse number three. Here it says, thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts in thee. One of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. As long as you keep your mind on the Lord, as long as you continuously worship God and, and focus on loving the Lord and loving the people around you, there is a peace that comes over you and it's called perfect peace. And when we're talking about the peace of God, it is perfect peace. And again, you cannot describe it. You cannot, you cannot put it in a jar and say, here it is. I, I cannot even analyze it. I just know that it's there. I just know that it's there. And so I thank God for this perfect peace. As long as I continuously believe that God is in control and that he will not allow anything to happen to me without him knowing about it <laughs> and without him taking care of it. And I know that because God loves me. Look at this situation. I want to close with this, this story. You may remember it from the book of 2 Kings uh, in, in chapter 4. Uh, it, it, it talks about how that this, this woman 
who was a Shunammite woman. Elisha was a prophet at that time and it was a, it was a great famine going on in the land and he would pass by the house of a Shunammite woman who was a great woman, a very wealthy woman. And her husband was there with her and they built a, a room for Elisha and they, they put a little desk in there and a, and, and a candle and a place for him to come where he can, he can study and where he could pray and he could rest. They had a nice bed in there. And so uh, Elisha could turn in there uh, every time he would go by their house. And she said, come on in and we're going to feed you. They gave him bread. They gave him a uh, and they took care of him and his servant Gehazi. And so every time he would go by there, he would uh, turn into the house of the Shunammite. And so she showed such kindness to him. And Elisha turned to his servant uh, Gehazi and he said, uh, what can we do for this woman? Uh, she's, she's already a very wealthy woman. She's got everything. Uh, oh, what is it that I can do for her because she's been so good to me? And Gehazi said, well, uh, she don't have any children and her husband is an old man and of course you know what that means well in a way uh, <laughs> the prophet can give her what a prophet's reward and so he began to speak into her life and he said all right this time next year you're going to embrace a child and the woman said man of God don't fool me I said, don't, come on now, don't play with me. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I, I don't, I don't want to play games. And he, he said, you just watch. This time next year, you're going to embrace a child. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened. That very time, the next year, down to the very day, she was embracing her newborn son. And so as time went on and this, and this child began to grow up a little bit and, and got a little older, uh, there was a day that the people were out and their, their, the servants were out in the field and he came running out to his dad and he said, Father, Father, my head, my head. And the boy passed out. And, and so in a way, he was taken home by his mother and when she took him home, she placed him on the bed of Elisha, the prophet who had been there uh, sometime in the past. And so she decided that, hey, uh, you know, this, this, this boy, when he was sitting on her knee, he actually died. And he, when he died, she laid him on the prophet's bed. And then she went out to seek the prophet. She told her husband, I'm, I'm going to go and I'm, I'm going to look for uh, Elisha. And he said, well, why are you, why are you going? What's going on? Uh, what, this, is, this is not a particular day that you would go out to seek a prophet. And so she said, don't worry. Everything's all right. And she used the term, all is well. They saddled up the, the donkey and, and she went out as quickly as she could. And people who would stop her along the way say, are you okay? Is everything all right? She said, all is well. Knowing all, the, all along that the boy had passed away. But she had to get to the man of God. And so when she got to the man of God and he saw her from a distance, he said to his servant Gehazi, hey, that's the Shudamite woman. Go see what's going on. Make sure everything's all right. Is all well? When he got there, that's exactly what she said. All is well. And when the prophet saw her, he said, is your husband okay? Is your son all right? Is everything all right at home? She said, all is well. But she began to fall down and began to speak to him. And see, the Lord had not shown the prophet what had happened. But when she got to him, that's when she began to know that, all right, uh, or the prophet began to know that, okay, something's wrong. Okay, we're going to have to go and check on her son. He sent Gehazi ahead and Gehazi went and he said to, once you get there, Gehazi, lay my, lay, lay my uh, staff upon his face and we'll be there shortly. And Gehazi did that. And then when they, he and the woman got to the house, he said, all right, you and Gehazi, you stay outside the room and I'm going to pray. He prayed over this boy realizing that he was dead but he prayed over him and nothing happened at first 
Then he placed his hands on his hands and his, his face upon his face. And he continuously prayed. Nothing happened. He got up and he walked around in the room and he continued to pray and seek God. And then he laid over the, the boy and finally the boy sneezed seven times and he raised up. And, she, and then he presented this young boy to his mother and she was blessed all over again because she said, I know that God would not give me something and then take it away again. For no reason at all. There had to be a reason for this. There had to be a lesson I had to learn in this. And the reason she could, she could think that way is because she spoke something out of her mouth. Knowing that the situation looked grave, knowing that the situation looked bad, it didn't matter. She continued to say out of her mouth, all is well. Can you say that today? Because eventually, Everything in your life is going to have to line up with what you say. If you speak negative things, then negative things will happen. If you speak good things, good things will happen. So she decided that no matter how bad things looked, I'm going to say all is well. This woman had the peace of God moving in her. She wouldn't let anything deter her from getting to the man of God and getting instruction from the man of God because she knew that God's got this. I'm going to pray. I'm going to seek God. I'm going to take it to the Lord. This, things don't look right, but the only thing I can do is I'm going to take my prayer and my supplication unto the Lord, and I'm going to worship him, and I'm going to be thankful in my spirit, and I'm going to continue to say out of my mouth, all is well. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. That is the attitude this woman had and that's the attitude that you and I need to have no matter what's going on. If we are going to combat anxiety, then we need to have the peace of God to come over us and the way that we do it is we begin to speak those things that are positive in those things that line up with the will of God. And we know that in the Lord, all is well. So if you want the peace of God, start with prayer. Father, we pray that if anyone is watching this today and they are filled with anxiety, we declare and decree that anxiety will flee right now in the name of Jesus and that they will experience the peace of God as they repent of their sins as they begin to, to cast their cares upon you right now, Lord God, and turn away from those things that they know is not like you. Turn away from those things that they know is, is not good in, in, the, in the life of a born again person. Let them turn away right now from every sin, every worry, every fear, everything that has caused them to be pressed down in the name of Jesus and we destroy that thing now in Jesus name we come against it now in Jesus name and we speak over them right now that they are filled with your peace and they walk in love in the name of Jesus and we declare peace to you and love to you and that God will bring you into right fellowship with him once again and we thank you for joining us today and we pray that this message has been a blessing to you we hope that you will contact us and we'll correspond with you and that you will be blessed. Give us a comment down there uh, at the bottom of your screen there. There's a place where you can leave your comments. There's a place where you can click and, and show that you like uh, what you're seeing uh, on this program. And we hope that you will join us again next time for another Day in the Word.